Hey guys, it's Mary Tiffany Henyer, and this is what it looks like when you pull up on your haters. Yeah, let me show you what I'm about to do. See this? Everyone needs help. Just remember that. Watch how you treat people because you never know when you need the help. You heard Tiffany Henyer. You guys never know when you're going to need somebody. That's actually pretty true. We got to make sure that the people that's in our lives that can help us, we don't offend. That's why it's always good to, as they say, never burn bridges. You never know if you got to cross back that side. But nobody has burned more bridges than Tiffany Henyer. She's pretty good at burning bridges. Not even in this particular administration she's running right now. Even with the first mayor, Riley Rogers. You see, Riley Rogers helped Tiffany Henyard get into politics to a certain level. You know, she became a trustee in 2013 when he became the mayor. And then uh, Tiffany Henyard got caught up in, let's say, a little bit of a real estate scam. Jacqueline Smith and her two children called this hotel room home for almost a month. Ever since the Dalton house they were renting from village trustee Tiffany Henyard was slapped with this. A big red sign that I cannot live there because it's unlivable. Unlivable mostly because of mold. All mold. He's grown on the bottom of the shoes is mold. Mold that Smith's landlord, Trustee Henyard, pledged to immediately clean up after we first reported on the problem in August. And that's where it started. Smith says workers came and painted. The house even passed a village inspection. Issues abated, notes Inspector Brian Thigpen in this September report, except they weren't. It's horrible. Enter activist David Lowry, who called Dalton directly. Suddenly, the house deemed livable on September 3rd became unfit for occupancy on October 15th. Lowry's theory? The trustee used her power uh, and influence. Henyards received 36,866 taxpayer dollars in Section 8 rent payments since 2017 when Smith moved in. Money that kept coming even after this foreclosure notice was filed against the house last year. We're staying in a hotel, so. All the while, Dalton taxpayers even helped foot the bill to keep Smith's family off the streets. He thought that, uh, you know, the village should be compassionate. Uh, she had nowhere to go. She had children. What we thought was to actually bill uh, Trustee Henry. That's right. That real estate scam cost the village of Dalton $35,000. And you heard at the end of it, he said the village shouldn't have to pay this Section 8 thing. She should pay it. But no, Tiffany Henyard disrespected Riley Rogers all the time with a whole bunch of outbursts during public meetings. Right. That's your style. Speak right. Up. You know? Can we can pass on this? Sure, we can. No, I'm not saying. Yeah. If you would be quiet and listen to what I'm saying, you would have heard my statement that I just said. We're going to ask for a motion. Okay, well, I got a comment. No, don't take the roll call. Just because you want to be want to be quiet now. No, no. And we no. override. Please. Okay, okay. You're out of order, trust me. Million. Make it leave. Make it leave. I like it. I am. But hey, she was able to get some more friends on her side. Like, Jason House and Kiana Belcher, and they actually campaigned together. Talk about, you know, when she says they ran on the ticket. Yeah, you know, so I got all y'all over. I, I'm, I got y'all to win because of me. So we did run on her ticket. So yes, that's that's not a statement that is not true. We did run on the ticket. We went all together, but we did a lot of knocking on doors, begging people to vote for her yeah. because they wasn't so with how she came off and portrayed herself as a trustee. So when she said we won because of her, I kind of think it's unfair because a lot of that push was because we all took in knocking on doors and begging people to vote for her that wasn't happy with her. But it's okay. She initially turned on them too. It's her a nice way and that's, that's it. And boy was, boy was I in for a surprise. When I met with her, uh, everything was was fine until we got to the budget. So I said to her, I said, well, hey, Mayor, you at this time you want them, we'll just say a million and a half for the sake mm -hmm. of uh, facts. I said, you want to raise the budget by a million and a half. I said, how about we meet halfway? So instead of a million and a half, you want to go an entire million and a half. We were more comfortable with what we've been spending the prior years, which is about <coughs> 22 million. And yeah. I said, well, I'm, I'm new, but 
my common sense tells me that normally when you're dealing with budgets, you go based on your prior yeah. spending, right? Yeah. That's even how we go about it in our household. Yeah. So I said, well, let's meet halfway instead of a million and a half. Yeah. Let's meet yeah. in the middle. And she said, well, you know, I don't think you understand how this goes. So I said, well, there's no way you compromise? She said, no. She said, you don't understand that mayors, the governors, the presidents, they all make the rules and everybody else just follows. So people like Edward Steve, who was also supportive of her and trying to help her out and, you know, basically trying to give her things. And I used to have to present my budget to the trustees. So you would say to the trustees, I want A, B, C, and D. They would look at the budget and say, okay, you want this, you're going to get A. You can't get B and C because we ain't got the money. Okay. But when she got in, there was a surplus of money. We gave her, we got a new fire truck, new, it was new police officers, new firefighters, new public works equipment, paving the parking lot in public works. This is stuff that we voted for. We voted for it. That was, we said, if she's the new mayor, we're going to start off new. The money's here. Let's give it to her. Let's, let's vote for this stuff to get it done. And she wanted, we gave her 95% when she won our first budget. She, she, she made a big stink out of the 5%. We said, let's hold off on this. And it, so it's like, you're right. It is it's 100%. I'm going to tell you what you're going to get. What did she tell you that one time when you said, there's no compromise? You don't compromise on nothing? So... And this is when I realized because it she just couldn't manage. And now the people in Dalton that were on her side have also defected. Keith Freeman, he's gone. Stan Brown, he's gone. The only guy that's still there is Andrew Holmes, but we never see him. He's gone. But it was different at Thornton Township where she was actually the supervisor. Because see, in Thornton Township, she had almost all of the trustees on her side, except for Chris Gonzalez. And the Thornton Township board member, Carmen Carlisle, was her right-hand woman. But then we saw several video evidence of Carmen Carlisle, who admitted that she made a mistake of Tiffany berating her like this. Um, the reason we created this ordinance is because um, we know we hold, a, well, you hold a lot of events in Dalton. And, um, yes. I don't feel it represents Thorne Township as a whole. There are 16 other towns that represent Thorne Township, and we want to make sure that every resident in Thorne Township has access to be able to be a part of everything that we have. And some people don't want to travel to Dalton. You know, and I think we should have um, the events in a more neutral location until we can um, cultivate relationships uh, with other municipalities and they will be willing to work with us. And so we just want to make sure that all the township residents um, have a place where they can feel welcome and we want it to be inclusive to any resident anywhere. And so um, one city is not a rep full representation of the township and that's why we created this ordinance. That's a shame. Um, you guys should even know. I ain't never seen nobody hate on that city at all. But I don't think I'm gonna get a new name if you call you Lion Car Carla. That's what I'm saying. You keep telling all these lies up here about y'all that don't represent the township. Y'all know. But for those that don't understand that keeps getting upset because they once are in Dalton, Dalton is under Thornton Township. So, as it relates to the stuff they don't tell you, we have events in several other cities. For those that don't know, if you do follow us, you know exactly what I'm saying. Days in the park are in every single city. And for those that don't allow us in this city, which I think the board have talked to, you talked to both of them, right? Jerry and Carmen, and told y'all the people that don't allow us in their cities. And y'all know this. Y'all sent emails from these people. Uh, Thaddeus Jones, um, people sent us emails saying, hey, if you come to our town, we're going to arrest you. We're going to turn your bills. These are all document stuff news if you want the facts. Um, stuff like that. But no one tells the truth up here. Y'all just say stuff. Like I said, clickbait. Also, um, Fox Point. But Carmen Carlisle has had enough. She's going to be a whistleblower. WGN Investigates has learned South Suburban politician Tiffany Henyard has lost another key ally. Until recently, Henyard enjoyed near unanimous support on the Thornton Township Board. But now trustee Carmen Carlisle says after trusting Henyard and remaining silent, she will be a whistleblower. And why is she doing it? Well, released a statement to WGN that reads in part, for the past two years, Henyard has manipulated employees, vendors, and residents using her position to increase her influence, all while projecting a false image of success funded by the hardworking taxpayers of Thornton Township 
and the village of Dalton. Henyard shows no accountability or conscience for her actions against employees or taxpayers. Let's bring it all into perspective. You see, let's read the statement again. For the past two years, Henyard has manipulated employees, vendors, and residents using her position to increase her influence all while projecting a false image of success funded by the hardworking taxpayers of Thornton Township and the village of Dalton. Henyard shows no accountability or conscience for her actions against employees or taxpayers. Then WGN also found out some more information about some trips that she took and how much money it really was. Let's look at one trip to Austin, Texas in July of last year. Five people, including Mayor Henyard, for five days. While we previously reported the township was billed $27,000, we now know the actual cost was more than $47,000 when you factor in what Dalton taxpayers were charged now tiffany henyard is trying to basically turn against those township trustees in a special meeting in the absence of the township's five sitting trustees supervisor tiffany henyard's attempt at a special meeting was more of a soliloquy uh, i am about to address some things as the supervisor uh, there will be no comments there will be anything it'll just be me addressing you guys to tell you what's going on in the township um, when can we address you, you but i just don't really get it guys because you see first of all guys here's what i don't understand if you're going to be a person that is going to say x y and z about an individual and you don't know who you may need well, the reality is that all of these people are turning against you. And it's crazy because if you go and look at her social media, she's talking about what God is going to do for her, the Lord Jesus Christ, all these people hating on me, you know, this, that, and the third, which to me, honest, it sounds quite silly because, well, it is silly. It's silly to be thinking that, you know, that nothing is wrong with you when everything is wrong with you. You are the problem. Fundamentally, you are the problem. And you're continuing to be the problem, although you don't want to admit it. And guys, let me tell you this, and I hate to say this, you're going to see more people like this in the Democratic Party, especially in the African-American community, more unaccountable people, more unaccountable leadership in the black community suffering in debt in certain black cities. That's what you see in almost every black dominated city under democratic rule. You're gonna continue to see it and I'm gonna be here to continue making videos about it. You see, the reality is that people in public office want to become celebrities. When public office is not about being a celebrity, public office is about serving the people. It's about doing the job as a servant. But Tiffany Henyard wants people to serve her. And that's what she wants to be. She wants to be a queen. And we got a lot of that. Like when you look at the events that are thrown in Thornton Township, what, what you actually get is, let's look at this. Supervisor Tiffany A. Hangard and the Thornton Township Board presents Youth Summer in School Back to School Fest. Hold on, wait a minute. If it's Tiffany Hangard presents, how much money did Tiffany Hangard put up for this? I can guarantee you none. So how is she presenting it as if she's like a club promoter or whatever? What, what are you talking about? You didn't put any event out. Look at this. Mayor Tiffany Hingard, Independence Day Parade and Festival. You're in the picture. You didn't spend any money. These are people's money. You don't have money. You never had money in your life. You were a bum the whole entire time. But you're presenting this? This is what is so funny. But guys, what do you think? It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe to the bell. We're out.